so it's recording right now and um yeah okay so we are filming this for youtube we have a few people joining us apart from ross but since ross is here at the moment let's start with ross just tell us a little something about yourself about how you got into magic and where you are at this moment uh well i got into magic um back a few years ago now about four years when i was watching dynamo on tv okay. i enjoyed uh seeing his tricks not not necessarily like wanting to figure out methods behind them. I kind of just wanted to um, be able to like share that experience that he was giving his audience members. I thought that would be quite valuable. Yeah, that's <clears throat> that's so important, especially with uh, uh, card. I mean, with, with, we're talking about card magic today, but magic in general, it's all about giving people that 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 wonderful feeling of going, "Wow, that's amazing!" Mm -hmm. And just uh, that's pretty much why most of us got into magic and that experience that we felt that we want to share to others. So we have a few more people joining us, but let's uh, today I want to talk about different styles of card magic. What now? You said obviously Ross, you do card magic in your repertoire. Uh -huh. Any particular styles of performing, or uh, what sort of card effects do you perform? Well. I'll be honest, I kind of just do the sort of standard routines, you know, ambitious card and uh, yeah. two card Monty and whatever. But yeah. I quite like doing those routines because it means that because it's almost like second nature to you, you can like focus yeah. on sort of presenting the magic and being personable to whoever you're yeah. performing to. True, Instead true. of like having to focus on all the slights and everything all the yeah. time. Yeah, I think we got Martin joining us. Martin, we are currently filming this for YouTube. You're a little late to the conversation, but no problem at all. Can you hear us? Yes, hello. You, you can hear us. Okay, we are filming yeah. this for YouTube. So uh, we were just the first question was, uh, well, I think everybody already knows you. You've been on the channel for quite some time now, <laughs> and a lot of Zoom chats. So uh, what what was the first card effect you you performed. In fact, let's let's start with Ross. We'll give Martin a chance to catch up on his uh, camera work and stuff there. Yeah. So Ross, what was the first you said ambitious card routine? Was that the first thing or is that something you do currently? Um, well, I've been doing that for the last few years. It wasn't too far into my magic journey that I started the ambitious card. But I think perhaps card to any number was one of the first effects. I was oh, wow. That's See, I think my first card effect that I did I think it was probably, I don't remember correctly, but I think it's probably Swingali cards. So these are for, for non-magicians who don't know, um, uh, Swingali is a, is a, I don't want to go into details because this, this channel is not about spoiling magic for anyone, but uh, Swingali cards is one of the first effects that I learned in card magic. Hello, Antonio. Hi. Hey, we are currently filming this for YouTube. So thank you for joining us. I don't Great. know how many people are going to keep joining. I've sent this to about 15, 20 people. A lot of them have messaged me and said they can't make it for some reason because of the time difference. And, and I, I, But there's not much I can do because I have this sort of afternoon slot, which works great for the people in America. And, um, you know, actually, let's, let's go straight into Martin. Uh, tell us quickly about your experience with card magic. When did you start? Is that the first thing you've learned? And then we'll move on to uh, so what did I start? It was basically Sam Gully deck as well. Okay. The okay. first first trick, yeah, that was like a gimmick trick. That was the first yeah. thing. And and I moved to normal card tricks basically, like same mm -hmm. as um, ambitious card. The ambitious card is kind of the ultimate trick you do for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So, but now oh, yeah. I guess now you do, you don't use a lot of, uh, should I say the word gimmicks, I guess. Uh, um, and in fact, Antonio is quite the opposite because Antonio, yeah. you create such a wonderful, in fact, I really wanted to have you on the creators chat that I had because uh, Martin, I think, do you all, all know each other? Yeah. Do you all, uh, all, yeah. You know, Ross, I don't know Ross, Ross no. from Scotland, no. Ross uh -huh. from Scotland no. and uh, Martin is obviously from London, originally from Iran. And, and Antonio, tell us about, tell us, in fact, tell, because you're the first time I've been on this channel, so tell everybody about where you're from, how did you get into magic, and that sort of thing very quickly. Okay, uh, so I'm from Brazil. I am 17. I got into magic, uh, well, I first saw magic at the age of six. My dad showed me, like, a mathematical card trick, and then okay. it explained. So I was like, ah. Uh, and then I started researching on YouTube and stuff, and then at the age of nine, I really started, I think, taking magic as, like, a hobby. Uh, and uh, when I was about 12, I started taking it seriously. Uh, now, I was always focused on like card magic and, and sleight of hand. But then when I was about 15, I think, uh, I bought Acme Hole from Lloyd Barnes. 
Uh, and that was a brilliant like gimmick. And it was the first okay. gimmick that I, that I learned how to build. I mean, I had purchased some before, but I've okay. never built a gimmick. And then I built okay. Hacking Goal. And then I started exploring with the mechanisms to adapt to different stuff. And then I started coming up with, with some gimmicks. Okay, so when you said Acme Hole, that's the one that, is it similar to what you showed me at Blackpool? Well, Acme Hole inspired eventually. Okay. When I oh. you at Blackpool. It's, okay. Acme Hole, it's a, it's a card with a hole. Then you turn it around and you peel off it and the hole became oh. a stick. Both sides. Mm. Yes. Have you all seen it, Martin I'm, and Ross? I'm guessing yeah. you all have seen that, yeah? Yeah, I've yeah, seen that. Yeah, no, I've nice. seen that on Instagram. Yeah, that's a very popular yeah. thing. I, I don't know how it's done, but I, I'm. Yeah, I don't have one yes. with me. Okay, uh, but, but you have that... yours. You have your your thing that you created, which you can show us later in this chat, right? Yeah, yeah, I have it here. Uh, okay, cool. So the original, like the original version of Acting Hole, required you to turn over the card and then peel off the sticker, and then you yeah. could show both sides. And I didn't really yeah. like the turning over action. So I, the first gimmick I came up with was an improvement to the original version where you could like flash your hand behind the hole and like imagine this is a card and there's a hole here yeah and you could show that your hand's behind then you come and you instantly peel off the sticker and then you can show both sides wow it's the same, same concept like in terms of the gimmick is very very similar but it doesn't yeah. require you to turn over the card well that was the first thing i actually came up with a whole bunch of things based on that concept and then wow. well and then eventually i was like well what if i make a hole smaller and then it jumps well what if i make four holes and then yeah, yeah, well, yeah, you know how it goes. Yeah, exactly. We all know how it goes. So Ross said uh, the first thing he started was uh, any it was card, just any a number. Basic, it was just right. a basic card, any number. Okay, and Ma uh, Martin, you said Swingali, probably my Swingali. And Antonio, what's the first card effect that you learned? First card effect that I learned. Yeah. Uh, the first card effect that I remember learning. I mean, I, I don't remember the the like very. I, I learned some very like weak card tricks okay. that I don't even remember because I don't do them anymore. Maybe the first but, one you performed to people and got Yeah, got I think that the, the first one that I remember, I have like the oldest video that I have performing something is Ambitious Card, but the okay. one that I remember learning is a Triumph okay. uh, with the Slop Shuffle. Yes, and, uh, yes. And the Chicago Opener. I don't remember right. which one I learned first, but I remember okay. when I learned both of them, I was like, oh, okay, this is really yeah. good. Like, card magic has some potential because this stuff kills. Yeah, I think, well, Jay's topic, because it's card magic, and a lot of people think that I don't ever do card magic, so this is, this is, uh, it's actually quite wrong, because I do perform card magic, but I just don't show it to magicians, because when magicians see me at Blackpool, or whenever these conventions, and they always think, oh, Brendan never performs card magic, is because they never see me do it, because I don't have anything interesting to show them with cards, I guess, that's why, but I do perform, and in one of the first years, in my early years of magic, all I was doing was pretty much cards, everything I was doing was more like a post reveal, post reveal sort of scenario. We were buying a lot of those sort of gimmicks so we can reveal it. But um, well, let's talk about let's go into talking about effects of ma in card magic. So in card magic, especially Antonio, now you showed me some very different effects with the holes and that sort of thing, which I think it's quite modernized. Uh, but back in the day, there weren't a lot of effects. I mean, the effects was a card rising to the top, a lot of mentalism you could do with card magic. So anyone can talk about the the effects that they perform. Nowadays, well, as in, yeah, okay. Any any sort of effects. I think card magic is the is the only kind of magic that you can do the most kind of effects. I'm guessing because you have prediction effects, premonitions. You have obviously vanishes appearance, transpositions, uh, penetration now, especially with like the sharpie through card. So, is there levitation that can be done so usually? I'll, they do I'll talk about something interesting. Uh, yeah. I don't know. If I don't know if you know about this, but certainly not everyone watching knows it. Uh, so there's Will Houston, who is I know a great Will, yeah. guy. He's yeah. a PhD in magic history and stuff. He started, w along with another guy, which I forgot the name, he started a, a kind of a, a new magic company called Video Chat Magic. Okay. Uh, you might have heard of it. And it's essentially the idea is that uh, during quarantine, especially, yeah. uh, people are uh, people are trying to adapt effects that they already perform into video chat. Okay. But that's not the best thing because if you try to adapt something already performed into this format, you're probably going to mm -hmm. lose some of the impact or some of the interactions. Yeah. So instead, the site is dedicated to publishing stuff that was designed for the video chat medium, which is actually okay. uh, quite a new thing. So we are like being part of day one of something. Like video yeah. chat is a recent thing inside Magic. 
and we yeah. have the opportunity to be part of day one. And since quarantine started, without knowing about uh, the site that we will be spinning up, I actually uh, came up with a couple things that are specifically designed for video chat. Like they cannot even be performed in any other way other than video chat. And then oh, I show them cool. Google. And yeah. uh, uh, I think next week or something. No, no, sorry. I think in the beginning of June, that's it. Like, which is around next week. Uh, it's probably going to be published on his site. So there's a couple. Oh, of I got to I got to check that out. I will definitely. Yeah. I know Will's a friend of mine. I didn't know he's doing this. I guess I might have skipped. Uh, sometimes Great. a lot of people, we, we, we're so flooded with social media from different people and sometimes you just forget yeah. what our friends are doing. So yeah, I'm definitely going to go after this conversation and go and check that, subscribe to that channel if I have to. And maybe if you guys want to later in this, yeah. in this call, I can show one of the things that I'm going to be publishing there. Is there yeah, couple? please. Yeah, show it because I'm going to leave all of your Instagram details uh, below this video so people can check you out if you like something. And again, Martin okay, and sure. Ross, same goes to you. If you want to perform something and show us in the camera, feel free to do so. You know, if, you, if you're trying something new that you want to learn or you just want to show the magic community something, feel free to do that. I'm not going to do it because yeah. I don't have anything, but I can definitely talk about some of the effects that I do perform, uh, which is um, I, I, I still do the invisible deck. I know some people say they hate the invisible deck. I think it's a fantastic effect and uh, I, I do it because it changes what I normally do with the technical skill, skill, skill. Then I go into something like this, just adds a little dynamic yeah. with my with my. Thing. But yeah, sorry, Antonio. No, I was you just gonna, gonna tell you, I do some impromptu versions of the Invisible Deck, so I'm one oh. of the. I, I don't like. I don't hate it. I think okay. it's great, especially uh, the Triumph with Invisible Deck is phenomenal. Yeah. Because uh, you can have the card shuffle face up, into face down, have the name any card, and then that's the card. Right. Oh wow! So. Yeah, if you never thought of that, that's strong. So that's that something, cool. yeah. that's like the thing I'll do with Invisible Deck if I carry one. But mm -hmm. I know a couple impromptu versions of it, so I don't really feel like carrying two decks for that. I, so. Okay, that's fair enough. And the thing is, I, yeah, I do carry two decks. I carry a, a deck in my jacket pocket and one in my trouser pocket, which is a normal deck of cards in case someone wants to see. Because I always give them the option saying, what do you want to see in Magic? I'm here to show you something artistic, something beautiful, mentalism. I give them the effects. I don't really tell them what it is. And I say... Um, do you want to see, you know, like a level? Well, the ball is my levitation bit that I do. But since we're talking about card magic, I'm not going to go into construction of routine. We can always have another chat about that. But what is the most powerful card effect you have performed on someone? Or you've got the best reaction. But let's start with Ross first. Uh, I think probably, do you all know the trick, uh, the French kiss? Yes. When, when I folded up cards, it signed yeah. and it like switches in our mouse. Yeah. I think. I've got some incredible reactions from family members and stuff. Yeah, I would that. say um, me, the same. I, that's the one I did for Kevin Hart. I met him at uh, the uh, Circle of Sua, which is a nightclub. And I was doing a lot of my stuff earlier. And it was funny because I couldn't have anyone filming me at that. I was like looking around. Then I saw my friend and I was waving at him. And then when he came, he said, okay, I'm going to film you now. And I was like, what do I do? I did my crystal ball. I did everything. So I remember the deck of cards. And I had uh, the French kiss set up for that. So I, that's when I did. So that's the video that you probably have seen maybe on my Instagram. Uh, Martin, what was the, what's the thing from, for you that, that gets the best reactions? I mean, all the card tricks are great. It's just in the right time. Okay. For example, okay. yeah, it's just that's a, the right that's a good to answer. Perform. Yeah, I think it just depends on where you are, what kind of yeah. effects would. Okay, okay, yeah. For example, if you. you're talking about, if you're talking about, oh yeah, I'm a very messy person, I don't clean my room, then it's the best place to move to Triumph because you mm. now create this. Uh, I don't know how can I say this. You create atmosphere? this thingy. Yeah, you create this atmosphere. So now you can talk about, for example, any card, any number. You can. It's more like a prediction as well. You know, you don't have to be your name and number. So I believe everything has the right time and the right place okay. to perform. Okay. But uh, card magic is, as you know, is one of my favorite things. My love of yeah, card magic is just because card magic is no right or wrong. You know, you just have to be fluid. You just have to play with it, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, with card magic, of course, it's a little bit harder because if you want to go to the advanced stuff, like the second, yeah. the bottom, the oldest stuff. But there's something to card magic which I like. You can put it in your pocket, go everywhere. You can go anywhere. You can just perform something that really Yeah, basically. and I think I think just to, to add to that, what you said, having a deck of cards in your pocket means you can perform so many different effects with one True. drop. 
uh, where That's you it. don't need to carry a lot of things. Like my friend Laura London, who I asked her to come on the chat, but I think she didn't, she didn't get my message. But um, the reason I wanted her, because most of her repertoire is card effects. Right now with the Zoom chat, she spoke to me, but she does something else. I don't want to go into necessarily what she does, but um, generally she's known as a card uh, mechanic or uh, uh, she does a lot of gambling routines with cards. And there's different styles of performing. You have some of the Dan and Dave style, like I think Martin, you are more, um, I would see you, you the kind of magic that you do is quite similar to that, but a lot of flourishing. And then we're going to go into that very quickly too, but let's go to Antonio first and talk about your effect that gets the most out of when you perform to people. Uh, I would have to agree with Martin. Like the effect that gets the best reactions normally is like situational stuff. Okay. So okay. perhaps uh, I'm set up to do a trick and then someone asks to see the trick that I'm set up to do. So something mm -hmm. that has happened once was I, I was going to a gig and then uh, one of the waiters in the gig looked up at me and she was like, you're a magician, right? I was like, yeah. And she was like, well, I noticed something you didn't. And I was like, what did, what did it? And she was like, your shoe's untied. And I was going to bend down to tie it and I had a uh, self-tied shoelaces set up. And I was like, no, 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 tie them without touching. I was like, oh, sure. And the shoe's tied. And then she was like, As, and I mean, she mm -hmm. asked to see a trick. I did it because it's so yeah. that's like, so this situational kind of stuff, I think the strongest trick that I can remember performing was I w there, there's this gag I do a lot where I take out a card and I go, name any card. And then okay. whatever. Just four of clubs. Card. Yeah, four of clubs. And then it is the four of clubs, you know? Oh! <laughs> so, uh, okay. You're going to get me the whole day now with that. Seriously, I, mean, I, can, I can show you people on YouTube. I did not plan that. Hey, hey, wait a minute. A lot of people know I'm, my favorite card is the four of clubs and they, especially like people like Paul Haley and stuff watching this, he does that at the magic circle, but that seriously impressed me. I think everybody on YouTube will be commenting that this was set up. It, trust me, people on YouTube, this was not set up, uh, but, uh, but yeah, sorry, continue your story. Wow, I'm still amazed so, at that. <laughs> so there's this trick that I do, Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is this, I take a card and I have them name it. Yeah. And uh, I, I would say, after, after this, I'll, I'll explain how it works, just so I don't reveal methods on YouTube. But yeah, yeah. most of the times I can get it to hit like I did right now, but sometimes it doesn't hit. But then yeah. one time I was gonna do it, uh, and then I called a friend of mine and I was like, yo, name any card. And then as soon as I said, name any card, my whole classroom was like, oh, Antonio, he's gonna do a trick. Okay, let's watch. And then the whole yeah. classroom like turns around, the teacher that was like teaching something goes and starts watching and like, they just stop the class and then do you know when you see like a rap battle and then yeah. there's this reaction like oh and, and those kind of yeah, yeah 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 and yeah, i yeah. was like yeah. three of clubs and i was like three of clubs and i turn it over and the whole class was like oh, oh my god I, like, I can <laughs> imagine like i just won a rap battle i was there like yeah 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 you know, <laughs> that was great wow that was great. wow i i can really imagine that situation right now where you were with people screaming yeah yeah and stuff. yeah so that, <laughs> yeah like Sometimes these things happen to me, like you just said, with the four class. I'm still, I still got to calm down and <laughs> relax. <laughs> that's good. But, yeah. but that's so good. Uh, the next question I was going to ask you was, what is the best thing that you can do on Zoom? Because I suspect a lot of people watching this right now are thinking, oh my God, I'm, I have to, I'm sort of limited to all, you know, just doing Zoom chats right now. For, uh, some of them are paid, some of them are unpaid. But what is the best card effect that we can do right now in this situation? Let's start with Ross first. What do you think? Well, lately I've been doing, although I don't usually perform that many color changes in real life, okay. I think color changes is probably the best thing that you could do in right. a Zoom chat. Okay. It's like you can't do French kiss, you know, because like that wouldn't work. No, exactly. Uh, I mean, I, I've done similar things like Chicago Open and stuff, but I think one of the bits where I get the strongest reactions, uh, because I do Zoom chats for the public, I don't, I mean, magicians can join if they want to, but I, it's mainly for the public. And I, I, I'm getting a lot of reactions with card two. Now, pretty much everybody listening to this has or have had card two with them in the past. So that's that gives me quite good reactions. Uh, Martin, what about you? Um, what, uh, you mean on Zoom, Zoom like an online video, what's the yeah. best magic effect you can do? So I don't want to give anything away, but right now you can only see one, just the frame, one yeah. picture. There's yeah. one frame here. So I can do a lot of things behind the frame, right? Okay. okay. So that's quite a lot. That's quite one gimmick. I, just, I don't want to give out loud. Right. But right. For like, example, I think I know what you mean, yeah. But yeah. for example, I'm holding a playing card. But don't, yeah. this time, don't go for four of clubs. 
Yeah. Okay. Because, okay. Uh, but if I, let me, yeah. Just name any card. Okay. This before I name, I want to tell people on the YouTube. Yeah. This is genuinely. He hasn't told me this. He's going to do yeah. this before the the conversation. I don't think it's going to hit again. But we'll give I'm it not, a go. I'm not, no, I'm okay. Not, I'm not so go, should, can I just name hit. any playing card? Any, any. Okay. Uh, let's go with a tough one. Let's go with. Uh, let's go with a, a, a Jack of Hearts. So the Jack of Hearts. Yeah. 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 Now. He's smiling. I don't no, know why he's smiling. <laughs> now, I, obviously, I didn't like. The, this this wasn't set up in any way. No, yeah? no. You said Jack no. of Hearts. Now, yes. Out of <laughs> one to fifty-two, is there any chance this might be a different card? Like, is there any way? Oh, there's a big be... chance it's going to be a different card. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because yeah. The, the thing is, like, it's it's wrong. It's not Jack of Hearts. Right? Okay. It's okay. it's wrong. But if I want to create this magic moment, all I have to do is this. And then change to Jack of Hearts. Nice. Right? <laughs> now, th okay. this is. Like this is, but I see what you mean. Magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is not magic. This is not a trick. But if you want to look at it for zoom for camera, yeah, it makes sense, right? Mm, okay. Now, uh, for me, like especially now, just because it's all this quarantine and stuff, mm. it's a good place to do in to do magic on the zoom, basically. You know, yeah. Because most of the time, you ask respect to hold your hand or do something. Yeah. You know, so this is kind of a challenge at the same time. You know, I, right. wait, I, I kind of like this because this is a challenge. How can I do something that make it, that makes magical? Do you know what I mean? That is magical for over the mm -hmm. camera. So yeah. this is kind of uh, it's, it's a whole, it's, it's kind of challenging. Yeah, but we we just gain the. To be honest, yeah. No, that's good. I, I think that's a great answer. Using what you have to your advantage, because some people, yeah. I mean, most people would say this is a disadvantage of having a camera, and ha not because we all know the strongest kind of magic is usually the magic that happens in someone's hands, and that's why things like the Omni deck and stuff are so powerful in magic, is because they can really feel it in their hands and they remember that they had. Oh, most of the time, I I hear when people say, "Oh, we've seen a magician before," they usually say, "And he placed a glass block of." Uh, you know, a glass in my hand and that's that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, let's go with Antonio. What's the best thing you can do on Zoom right now? Uh, let me actually show one of the things that- Please, gonna, please. Because that I think answers the question. Yeah. So I have a deck of cards, a deck of tally hoes. Yeah. Uh, and I'm gonna have you just name any card again. Okay. We're all into naming cards here. Uh, let's go with Ross. Ross, why don't you name a card? I don't Ross, want people to think that we set it up. Ross, okay. go ahead. Four of hearts. Four of hearts, great. Uh, let me actually show you this, because I want to be honest. Yeah. Somewhere, oh, okay, great, four yeah. of hearts. Uh, let me actually lower down the camera, just so you can see, can you see yeah. it? Yeah. Yep. Great, so we got the four of hearts. And let's try this. We'll place the four around halfway into the deck, okay? And we'll pour it in. It's fair, right? Yeah. Probably as fair as it can get. Now, if I give the deck a gentle shake, just like this, can actually change the color of wow. the top to blue. Oh, nice. In fact, every single card changes yeah. into blue except for one. So now we are left with a completely ah, blue deck except yeah. for one card, and that should be your four <laughs> That is great. Nice. Wow. wow. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. Uh, and is that your own? Because I know yes, there's a few right. out that's there. Right. But... And that's going to be one of the things that I'm going to teach. Oh, that's great. Someone else wants to join in. Uh, let's send him that invite. Uh, oh, that's great. So where could people learn this? I mean, I was going to ask this at the end right now, but since people are watching video this. Videochatmagic.com. I think that's Video it. chat. Is that your website? Video chat magic. That's not my website. That's Will's website. Oh, of course. Yes. And you're going to be performing it and teaching it on there. Yes. Nice. Excellent. And later at the end, we'll ask you all your personal details and where you can find you. But as I said, I'm going to put all your links in the description of this video below. So the next question is, where do you see our magic in the future? Where do you see it going? I think the old school, um, I don't know if a lot of people do manipulation magic where they have, you know, cards producing from thin air, as they say. Uh, back in the day, this was very popular. Uh, I think a few people do it now, but... I personally don't know a lot of people apart from like Henry White and a few others that actually do that old school style of card manipulation. Ross, where do you think card magic is going to go in the future? Well, I don't really know. I think everyone's still going to be performing it as a table hopper and stuff. And I think maybe the future of, you know how 
I don't want to say it on the chat, obviously, but uh, does black ring a bell? Black mats? Yes, 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 yes. I, yes, I totally, yeah. I think that's yeah. sort of stage magic. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Ross. I, I know what you mean. Um, that's, I, I think, the same way too. And I definitely think Antonio is like the next... You, I think you're going to be the next big name in magic, really. You already are a name, but I think you're going to be one of the great ones in magic. Uh, Thank seriously, you. If you haven't seen him, Thank you so much. Uh, check him out. The, the stuff you create is unbelievable. Uh, in fact, since we're talking about you, Antonio, where do you think you see magic in the next few years? I think Card magic. I think card magic has, has a very interesting aspect compared to other types of magic, which is uh, the practicality uh, of carrying a deck of cards and also how many effects you can perform with a deck of cards. Like mm -hmm. you can entertain an audience for like three to four hours with just a normal borrowed shuffle deck. Yeah. So I think uh, card magic is not something that's going to disappear, such as I, I believe at least coin magic is eventually going to become, uh, I'm not going to say credit it's card? Disappear, but I'm, but I'm going to say it's going to like fade away slowly because coins okay. are going to stop being used. Yeah, but I don't think cards are going to stop being used because card games will like forever be popular. It's just practical to carry like fifty-two pieces of paper and then play yeah. with your friends and something yeah. in casinos and stuff. So I don't think I don't think card magic will vanish in any way. I think more and more technology will be incorporated into card magic. So okay. if you guys know what this is. Jamie Allen from the iPad Magician did that. Insight, I don't know what that is. Tell us uh, something about it without giving away methods. Yeah, so this is from Hugo. Can, can, I, can I say what it is? Ah, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, Hugo Shelley, right? Yes. This is more, yeah, I see what you mean. Exactly, okay. Uh, more on the electronic side, uh, let's put it yes. that way. And, 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 I think, and I think more and more, like, card magic is going to become something that uh, has, it, it's both, because uh, at this point right now, I think card magic is like either you perform it on stage and close up or on parlor. It feels mm -hmm. like the same thing. I think these will diverge into card magic for stage and card magic for close up. Even yeah. though most techniques are going to be the same, like mm -hmm. the black thing that he was talking about, which you can't really perform close up most of the times, or other types of, of, of things, uh, especially some, I would say, levitations. And uh, I think at the end of the day, like, Card magic close up uh, is still something that easily like establishes a strong connection with your spectator. Yeah. So even though like if if we live on I don't know uh, twenty I don't know two thousand and two hundred and everything's technological and half of the po world population is like robots and stuff, you bring out a deck of cards which is normal and has nothing to it. It's just paper. There's no tech. There's no nothing. And you can do stuff that would only be possible with technology, like yeah. for instance, taking a card and changing it, which yeah. would only be possible <laughs> if you had like an electronic yeah. screen that whatever. So yeah. I think it will it, card magic especially is gonna like surpass technology and still be present, even though I think so. I think events. so too. Yeah. That's a great answer. Martin, what about you? What do you think? So basically obviously back in the day there was all like manipulation stuff, but yeah. now the, most of the tricks is visual quick and get to the point, right? Okay. Because that's what it's gonna be. And for me, like, even though I'm not, again, I like all the card tricks, but again, sometimes right place, right time. You know, mm -hmm. if I want to do something with counting, yeah, I do count cards. If I want to do yeah. something changing, color change, I do something with color yeah. change. But uh, again, because every, I noticed that since the past 10 years, card magic kind of jump different way, you know? Like mm -hmm. Dan and Dave, they do kind of quick magic, like quick flourishy stuff. Yeah. So uh, the world's changing anyway. So like maybe, exactly. yeah. Yeah, I, I think the same thing because back in the day, you couldn't really do certain effects like now on with social media magic, especially on Instagram. If there's no magic, I think in the first four or five seconds, people are going to click away. They just want to see quick things happening on Instagram. That's the kind That's, of magic yeah. that usually people are watching these days. In fact, sometimes you... Online, you can reach so many more people than you would in public. Like I work pretty much five, six days a week, working in different bars, different clubs, meeting so many people. But I think with one video, one person can reach millions of views that I would never be able to do, you know, in live. So that's that's the, uh, the whole thing, the technology, I guess. Who's your favorite card magician? Let's start with Ross first. Who do you look up to in card magic? It doesn't have to be one person. Ooh, that, that's, that's a tough one. Yeah, I, I know, because everyone's that, so um, different. 
Yeah. Oh, let's think. Maybe I can start. For me, I I yeah. like um, the, the the thing. The name that comes to my head right now, and I want to give a name that a lot of people know of, is probably Shin Lim. I love his style. I love the way he uses music, uh, just because it relates to me, I guess. So that's why I love Shin Lim's style of magic. Uh, but yeah, go, Ross, go ahead. Will you? Yeah, I'd even just say Dynamo. To be fair, okay. just that style of just that style of street magic, street street magic style. Yeah, yeah. Because David yeah. Brown and Dynamo kind of started that trend, and then I think right. a lot of people okay. f followed up on it. Obviously, there was a lot of other people working on it, mm -hmm. but and I, I'd, I'd still say the original. I still say the originals that kind of did that. Yeah, yeah, I see. And I think because you started off and you said with Dynamo, so I guess that's uh, it's always a personal thing to you, yeah. it, because that's he's the one who inspired you to get into magic. Uh, Martin, what about you? Okay, this is a this is a tough one. Yeah. For me, I don't have a favorite magician. For me, favorite is where I get inspired from. You, okay. you can give me inspired from contact juggling, right? Yeah. You can give yeah. me inspired, like for example, I get inspired as you know my the act that you, the the invisible card which yeah. I did yeah. it was the inspiration came from uh, Javi Benitez, okay. right? And you yeah. see the music, all the stuff. So I don't have a favorite magician. All I do, like I do have a, like a for example. Like Dan and Dave, they all kind of one of my favorite as well. Uh, I don't know the other stuff like Will Houston, Shin Lim, mm -hmm. they all kind of. But I, I kind of look at it because I believe all magicians are great. I believe all of them great, you know. Mm -hmm. But if I get inspiration from one of them this much, that's it. I'm I'm happy, you know, because that doesn't mean this or oh, this guy is the best or not. Because I, of course, for people, Dynamo and David Blaine, they obviously they all know them, but. For me, if I get low inspiration from any of them, I'm happy. Because for me, magic is not who's best. Because magic is not about what you do, it's what you say. Because yeah. for me, real yeah, magic is that. For me. for me, real magic is this. Like, so I've seen people that are very good with hands, they're very good with cards, but they don't have this inside them. This is what, right. kind of, because it's, it's not an ego, but this is kind of, a, yeah, I'm the best, I'm that, I'm this. But no, I've seen people that are more skills, but have something that, kind of humanity as well you know mm -hmm. that's why mm -hmm. in this now world everyone the people kind of judge everyone now the guy who is the best one yeah we should go talk to them but not that doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. you know, maybe yeah. there are some people they don't have that much skills that you have but they have kind of this humanity you know for mm -hmm. me this inspiration for me do you know what I mean so yeah. I don't look at it as a, if someone yeah he's very good at this card he can do this he can do that but if you don't have that humanity it's going to be shit for me True. Yeah, that's a, that's I'm, a, I'm, yeah, I'm. I give honest. I give honest opinion. I don't care who is who. But for me, yeah. little inspiration, like for example, like uh, Antonio, he mm. did one lovely thing that can get inspiration for me. You know. Yeah. So I don't have a favorite because for me, everyone is my favorite. Okay. Okay. Good answer. And Antonio, yeah. what about you? You have any particular name that stands out to you, or similar answer to Martin? Purple. How many can I name? <laughs> no, you can name as many as you want to. Any anyone that you think that people should watch. So, for example, I mean, people watching this on YouTube, if they want to watch some good card magic, who do you recommend they should look up to? So, I'll name a few. Uh, first of all, if we go with like masters or like living legends, I would have to say David Williamson, Juan Tamaris, and okay. Leonard Green stand out. Okay. Uh, I would say out of magicians that I think are underrated and that already like passed away, uh, most people know Alex Elmsley because of the Elmsley count, but they don't know yeah. the rest of his work. Alex right. is a genius. He was like, I think all of the all of the work with like Pharaoh Shuffle that yeah. people know of, Alex was like the first one to come up with this stuff. He was like a mathematician. He Alex is unbelievable. Uh, I think from our generation or a little bit of upwards. One people, one person that's fantastic to watch is Tico Pasteur from Spain. Tico, also okay. not many people know him. I, I think inside the magic community, not many people okay. know him. Maybe they do, but I, I've only heard of him recently. So, but Tico is is kind of the artistic style of magic with like music playing and beautiful gestures and insane wow. skill. And okay. the invisible deck impromptu that I talked about is his. Yeah. Oh, so wow. he is. So he's a genius. Okay. Uh, I would say for creativity. I have to search up to guys like Tom Elderfield. Yeah. Uh, Tom is Tom, Tom is, just, is a, yeah another genius. Tom is just incredible. Like there, there's yeah. nothing bad to say about him. Like he comes up with as many things as he can. It's yeah. incredible. Uh, I'm also a really big fan of Mark Calabrese and okay. Mark Taylor yeah. from England. Those two guys uh, are 
spectacular. So I mean, there's there's too many names. This to, yeah, a lot of names. To, yeah, but I, but de but definitely send me the link for uh, Chico or Kiko. You said it. Chico, uh, I would love to see, yeah, I'll send yeah, yeah, I would love to see his yeah. thing. Maybe send me a private link later. I would yes, love to see yes. one of his because I love watching routines like that. Another one that uh, I'm reminded of is uh, the butterfly act by from. Um, Ah, I know him, uh, David, uh, Boris Wilde, Boris Wilde. Yes. Uh, he did the butterfly act and I think he did it to Evanescence, the music, and it's just beautiful. Um, so last but least we end, does anyone want to show us something? I'll show uh, the card I built as a gift for Andre. So. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's go. So yeah. we have a playing card, beautiful deck of butterfly playing cards. And yeah. uh, there's a difference between waving and snapping, which is quite interesting. Okay. If you give it a card of dental wave, I can get a hold to appear. Oh, yeah. And that's a real hole. Now, if I snap, this hole disappears. So normally I don't snap, I only wave. So if I wave, yeah. I can get a hold to appear. So that's the first one. The second one with the second wave. So wow. now there's two holes. If I do like this, they multiply into four. Oh, beautiful. So now there's four holes. And if I shake the card just like this, you can see they actually spread. <laughs> All of the, the four different corners of the card. Amazing. Without touching. So watch. There's the first one. Ah, sorry. Uh. There's the first one. There's the second one. There's the third <laughs> one. To finish wow. like we started, just a snap. And no holes. What? Oh. oh, that's beautiful. And you made Thank that you. yourself. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. And is this for sale? Where could people buy something like this? They can just uh, hit you up on Instagram, maybe? At a convention. Okay. And then you're, they can buy. I might release it, but it's hard to build. Like it takes me five hours to build each. So we'd either have to find some like gimmick building guys that work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That have some free time to spend, oh, or I have wow. to build a bunch myself, which I don't really feel like doing because I have other <laughs> things to do with my time. But I, I normally build like, ten or twenty to take to conventions. So if you meet yeah. me at the convention, just go, hey, can I buy a matrix? And I'll be like, sure. Here Sounds go. good. Sounds good. There we go. We well, heard that. Anybody else want to do something? Can do yeah. a quick color change or something. Yeah, go. please go ahead. Go. I'll stand up for it though. Yeah. So watch the nine of diamonds. Yeah. Nice move. I like that. Wave my hand over it. Oh, that's beautiful, Ross. Very smooth. I like that. It's really cool. Martin, something quick before we go. Something quick, Ashri. This is the ultimate trick watch. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me spotlight your video. There we go. Oh, that's smooth. <laughs> you know what? Something so simple also is still so smooth. I like the way you did that though. Um, great. Okay, so I think well, we've you. ended this chat. So we, uh, for those who are watching this and want to join in for any of this chat, really, just look up on the Instagram stories. I'll tell you what the next one, the next chat we're going to do is Rubik's Cube. Uh, that's going to be tomorrow. So when this video is out, you probably are going to miss that. But keep a lookout on Instagram for the stories for the next chats that we're having. But otherwise, thanks all of you for coming and taking, spending your time to do this with me and for the YouTube channel. You're welcome. Take care, everyone. We're going to end recording right now.